smile for the camera One moment lasts forever An image caught in black and white We're gonna all live forever Smile for the camera And for all the friends we've lost We'll cry a tear, hold up our beer And wish they could be here Smile for the camera One moment lasts forever Smile for the camera Hey! We're gonna all live forever Smile for the camera One moment lasts forever Smile for the camera We're gonna all live forever Smile for the camera Welcome back. Uh, that was the, I guess that's a trailer, right, Paul, from uh, the movie Blatant Exposure? It, that It's a trailer to a film I'm working on that I hope to finish someday. Now, why would you want to make a film? <laughs> <laughs> why do, why I would like I want to make a film? Well, I haven't made a film in seven years, so I figured it was time. Okay. And what I decided to do or try to do was make a film about f filmmaking. Have you seen that? Uh, that sounds like a coffee table book about coffee tables. I almost. hope to have a coffee table book that goes with it. Uh, that's a good <laughs> idea. Um, to grab the attention of people <laughs> like yourself. <laughs> okay, a film about filmmaking. And you're a filmmaker, so that, that makes sense. Right. Um, and it's a film about myself making films. Because over the years, uh, as a photographer, then I started making films. I've been documenting my life in a weird way right mm -hmm. and when your work goes public your your life it becomes a bit strange uh, i find no okay <laughs> no in what way because you were on oprah i mean that's how public you yeah that find, was strange right so um how does your life go strange with well, is it on oprah it <laughs> it's not an everyday you wake well, up no, and like, oh. well no it's true yeah. it, like i was on i made my last film that i made I showed it at a theater in Toronto for friends and family, and it was free. And mm -hmm. nine months later, I was on the Oprah show. My film was being featured on the Oprah show, and it was like, what? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's a, and that's, you know, there's, as I look back, my, my life, you know, my, my work is always looking at me, right? Mm -hmm. Like I have images and video, and it's, it's, we, it's weird to document your life you like that, and I think that's an interest. I, it's something that hasn't been done in documentary film. I, so the one thing about it is, it, mm -hmm. I think it's totally original, and people go, "Well, how can you be objective about mm -hmm. your own life?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which I don't know if you can. Well, and maybe I don't it's care. not about being objective. Maybe it's not. No, being it, it's not. Right? It's interesting that you mentioned this thing about um, it's like a, you're turning the mirror in a sense mm -hmm. on your life as a right. filmmaker, but also as a human being right and sometimes I think that the media all the media is a, a mirror for all of society and television when television came out as a medium which is it's the same as film it's just another way to deliver right film mm -hmm. essentially right um, it's like holding a mirror up to society and look how much society has changed as a result yes because you show um, you show poverty on TV and all of a sudden everybody's trying to solve the prob uh, poverty. You right. show uh, domestic abuse on TV, all of a sudden everybody's trying to solve domestic abuse, right? right? And maybe it's a way for us to kind of evolve as a culture and as individuals. Right. How are you evolving? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, well how, how am I evolving? My, my documentary work is doing exactly that, right? I, I show people their lives and Crack yeah. Not Broken was was the last film I made. That was a film that mm -hmm. was on Oprah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That literally when that my, the subject of my film saw that footage, 
it changed their lives. Mm -hmm. And and the the film ch I know through reaction I continue to get on it mm -hmm. has changed other people's lives. Like yeah. when they saw the film, they went, "Thank God!" I you know people can now you get reaction from because your if your work's on the internet and mm -hmm. it can be seen, people can Absolutely. react to it and contact you and. Yeah, media has changed so much, and it's mm. that's another reason why I'm doing the film is I haven't been able to sell a film since my last film mm -hmm. because of, I believe, the financing system that's he here in Canada for filmmakers. Uh, it doesn't work for me, mm -hmm. but with the internet and with social media, I've, I've, I've looked at other industries that have dealt with that problem mm -hmm. and how they've done it and, I, and I've come up with the concept to do that with my f work which is I don't care about broadcasters anymore so that's a funny model right. for your own work that you well right? yeah out of desperation of course that's but what that's how you get that's how you make change and that's that's how the music industry changed and you, you continue know, when to get creative through did it. yeah when did you, when I as a photographer so I studied film and mm -hmm. I was beginning to build a business as a photographer and when I saw it, what digital was coming in I went I'm screwed here it comes it's, it was like a right. tsunami mm -hmm. and there was mm -hmm. a bunch of photographers taking pictures on the beach and they they all got wiped out and I decided I better do something different mm -hmm. and I started to make films and use technology to my advantage mm -hmm. And I've had some success. I've made three films that have done something. Mm -hmm. But it's been seven years since I've made a film and I, I keep going, I've got to do something. And, and have you seen, um, do you watch documentaries much? Y yeah. So Anyways, much. Right, I s watch a lot of documentaries because mm -hmm. it's what I, I think it's the best form of film entertainment. But. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw there's a, f a film out called The Promise, which is the making of Bruce Springsteen's mm -hmm. album, Darkness on the Edge of Town. Brilliant film, brilliant story. But it, I looked at it and went, well, that's, it's interesting because he had, at that point in his career, he had made three albums and I have made three films. Okay. And then he sort of walked away from the industry and spent, I don't know, something like four years working on this one album and then he came out with this album that you know changed my life and changed a lot of people's lives and it was all about the struggle the mm -hmm. he, and he wanted to do something his own way and that's how I believe good art and good yeah good art is made mm -hmm. you've got to control it because in the commercial world I deal in, it's this, you're dealing with mm -hmm. groups of people, like it gets so big and then you, it starts with a good idea and then the idea gets chopped exactly. <laughs> and destroyed and it comes out of something you go, oh my God. I, and it's nice that you have control over it, but what, do you have an expectation with this project? Because the last one, you didn't see what it coming. Yeah. And this one. But, well, yeah, except I, di you know, I didn't, I couldn't have predicted what happened, mm -hmm. but I knew when I looked at even the rough footage, I went, there's something, there's something here and something's mm -hmm. gonna happen. And, you know, what do I expect to happen with this? I, I don't know, but I know there's a, I know it's something that hasn't been done, so right. it's something original in filmmaking and that's hard to do. But it's also based on a whole bunch of other things that have been done too. Okay. It's just I'm going to I'll have I'm making a film about myself and that's weird. So do you have a do you have a <laughs> uh, uh, an intention behind it? Mm -hmm. Sort of getting back to your question, I guess. But yeah. is there an intention? Did you intend that your last film was going to help people uh, deal with their addiction issues? I thought I thought it would help. So this film here what what do you think the um, well, I, I come can be. hopefully I think uh, for artists and gives them some people hope. You know, when I 
as you struggle along mm -hmm. as an artist, you, I constantly look at other how other artists and read about other artists, what be the filmmakers or photographers, mm -hmm. musicians, how you know it's part of the game. Right. Like if you're gonna go, if you set out to do something your own way, that's it's gonna you, there's gonna be roadblocks, mm -hmm. but it's possible to do, mm -hmm. and it, you know. I've come on this show and talked about other films that I've been working on and that are in various stages. Like, I have w films that I've been working on for half my life. And uh, so I hope this, I, I really think that, I, I have thought that there was other films that were going to be made in between this period. Right. But at this point, I go, I can't rely on other people anymore because it's when you're telling other people's life stories. Mm -hmm. There's a you, that's a lot of responsibility. Absolutely. It's hard. It's a hard thing to do. So I figure, well, here's my life. I've asked other people to do it. Some have done it. Mm -hmm. uh, some haven't. So I said, well, I'll turn the camera on myself, and I want to tell my story. Do you think it's going to get weirder or you're going to get used to it? And then there's well, also casting someone, so you're, there's still more growing for you, it sounds like, through all of this. Well, totally, and that's what I want it to do, too. I've never, you know, I've done strictly documentaries, mm -hmm. and to have that creative freedom to go, I can, A, recreate stuff in my life or mm -hmm. look into the future. And like I said, yeah, I, I've seen... Hopefully, when this is made, I'd like the film to be me at the end of my life, right. looking back on my life. So I have to sort of look into the future, what I think my life might be. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm intrigued. Complicated. <laughs> is, is there a way people can, you know, stay on top of where your project is going? Because it's not ready yet. We don't have yeah, a date. But well, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I've, um, there's the clip that was run here is on mm -hmm. YouTube under blatant exposure of the film okay and I started a uh, Facebook page about it okay. it's blatant exposure of the film also and which yeah I plan to use social media to continue to tell the story build, build an audience I mm -hmm. hope you know people that like the idea w could possibly come become involved awesome. and uh, see how it goes that's really exciting and that's that's good. Except I heard that f social media may not be around in a couple of years. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, who cares when <laughs> 2012, <laughs> your favorite date is coming up. Uh, the <laughs> by end the end of, the of world. this year, it won't uh, matter yeah, anyway. I'm finish my film by then. I'm, I'm sort of <laughs> just just kidding, Paul, about the social media. But yeah, no, actually, the point I'm trying to make is really that it's like. Um, you may not know, as you didn't know, that you were going to end up on Oprah for, for your last film. It's like, you know, if you stay true to the art, whatever it is, then, and you just keep your eye on the environment and keep trying to move it forward, even if you don't know how, right, if you're staying true to it, that hopefully, and, and I, I've seen evidence that the cream does rise and the good stuff does get out in the end. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, in today's world, and who knows where it's going, you know, you're going to be able to control that a bit more, and you're not mm -hmm. going to have to rely on commissioning editors or, right. you know, whatever the whoever's making decisions. And yeah, it's all changing. Like I look at, I look at film festivals now, and I go, they're kind of like, who cares about getting into film festivals anymore? There's a, there's a million of them, yeah. mm -hmm. and b, you can reach a bigger audience with, right. without them. All you're getting is this nod of I don't I mean it can't hurt I've, yeah. I've had sure. my films in festivals and I, I Plus love they're it. fun right oh, they're amazing Just, uh, meeting the other filmmakers and approval thing for people as well though, yeah right? well you you, you know on. it's it's all just part of that whole thing of moving it forward you, you mm -hmm. win an award at, a, at even if it's uh, just this tiny film festival well, all of a sudden you're an award win, winning filmmaker no, no, yeah, right? yeah no no there's there's good there's it, like you say, it, I, and I've had my work in festivals. Mm -hmm. It's fun. It's it's great to be able to show your work to people who are interested. But like um, the first film I did, the first film I ever made, I went to my high school reunion mm -hmm. and I made a film about it. And 
I don't think I could make that, well, I know I wouldn't be able to make that film today just because of Facebook, because of, right. of there's like everybody knows. Because now everybody's knows, in touch. It's right. not a reunion mm -hmm. anymore. Everybody's. That's, that's right. And, yeah. and you can, um, it's yeah, just it, how things change and how, where we are today, like I couldn't have predicted back when I made my last film, but where we're going to be in five years like film festivals might be irrelevant then. Exactly. Now. Who knows where we're going to be in five years? Because it's all going to end this year, Paul. 2012. <laughs> 2012. Only a Maybe few more months Maybe that's my left. documentary. Yeah. <laughs> I need another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Paul. Anyway, great to have you back on the show. Great to have this thanks. conversation. And again, people can look it up on Facebook. Just uh, yeah. look up Blake and Exposure, it'll right? hopefully evolve, get a, a yeah. website, and Absolutely. we'll see where I it's going. I so. Okay. I'm very intrigued. I hope to see this. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thank so you. we are going to take a little break. Uh, coming back with Edgar Bro. Uh, he's got a new album coming out. I don't think it's out yet. Patches of Blue. But we're going to hear a track right now, and we're going to come back and chat with Edgar and uh, get some live performance. And we're really looking forward to this as Liquid Lunch continues on a Wednesday. We'll be right back. Wow, you do that. <laughs> Rippled in the place.